today we're going to be making a sculpture out of some common everyday household items. So for this you're going to need a coat hanger. It could actually be any type of wire honestly, but a coat hanger works great because most people have them. Um, it does have to be a, a metal one. Um, you're going to want some stockings. Just one, actually one leg of the stocking. Um, try to get one without any runs in it, but if it does, it's not the end of the world. Um, you're gonna want some heavy duty wire cutters as well as pliers and something to use as a base for your sculpture. I am using um, this floral foam block, which is going to work, but um, if you have wood on hand and you have ability to drill some holes into the wood, that's even better because it's usually a little bit strong and stronger but the floral um, foam block will work as well the thicker and the stronger the better um, additionally you're going to want some sort of glue or adhesive to help um, stick your wire into it uh, we'll talk about what you need to add elements of decoration like paint and all of that later but for now we're just going to start with our base beginning part all right first thing we're going to do is take our coat hanger and we're going to separate it so it doesn't look like a coat hanger anymore. So when you're working with wire, you often need to kind of use both hands. So pulling with one with one hand to kind of break it away from the bit that's at the end there um, to try to get it to separate. So I'm holding with this uh, left hand nice and steady um, and then I'm using my right hand to bend and push and use my muscles to kind of warp it out. If you're having a hard time with it, you can get some sort of pliers to help you do that. So hold on with some pliers and then twist and bend while holding on with your other hands. That way you have a separated coat hanger. Um, once you get to this point, I do like to get rid of these extra little bits at the end. So I like to take my wire cutters right there and um, snap off. So I'm going to start turning and bending this into something of an interesting shape, hopefully. Um, you don't have to have a solid, complete plan. You can use your own hand muscles to do this. You can use some pliers to help brace and hold it while you bend with one hand so that it'll stay in place. You can also use the edge of a table or um, anything, that a bench, something that's heavy that um, you don't have to worry about hurting with the wire. I'll show you how to do that real quick too. So here I am at the edge of my table and I can use this to kind of bend and twist um, and push my wire around so that I am bracing it against something. Um, think about different directions. You could have um, a really simple shape or you can have your wire go from one end to the other. It can bend back and forth a couple times. Just think about the sort of shape and the direction that you're getting from it and try to create some interest and movement with the wire. You are going to want the ends to be equal. So right now this one end is a lot longer than the other. I do need them to sort of come together and meet at the same point so that when I put them in the block they'll go down at sort of the same level. We don't have one that's going all the way through the block and then one that's barely going through it. So I do have to some adjustments. So this part is going to take a little time to kind of bend and warp and manipulate until you get the shape that you think would look the most interesting. So really take some time to look at your shapes that you've come up with and kind of decide what you think is going to look good and what you think you want to change or alter. Also look at how far apart they naturally want to go um, and if that seems like too far of a distance to fit into your block you might want to force them together just a little bit more by kind of bending and twisting one part. You ha do have to use some aggressive movements um, to get this to cooperate the way you want. Um, and again once you think you have a shape that you think is interesting, you think is balanced and will hold up on its own for the most part, um, if you need to further trim these down to make sure they're really more even. They don't have to be exactly even, but you do want them kind of close. And right now I have them pretty close. So now I'm ready to put them into my block. Now if you, again, if you have a wooden block, you can drill some holes in and then fit them in perfectly into those holes. You do want them to be pretty snug. Um, or you can do what I'm doing, which is I'm just going to poke them straight into the block. Now I am going to be gluing these in as well, but I am going to initially just kind of put them in to make sure that they 
will hold up on its own. And also to make sure I like the way the appearance looks. So I'm looking at it from multiple angles, multiple sides, trying to see if I like the bend and the shape that I've been creating with my wire. Also, again, making sure it will hold up on its own without falling over. And it does seem to be doing that. So um, once I'm totally satisfied with this, we are going to glue them in place to make them permanent. I'm going to be using a combination of hot glue and um, some strong tacky glue, or you could use like um, the really strong industrial glue too. Once you're done sculpting the wire the way you want it and you've tested to make sure it will stand up and hold in place and that the arrangement looks the way you want it to look, we're going to be gluing it in place. Um, to do this, like I said, I'm going to be using some um, tacky glue in combination with some hot glue just to make sure it really stays um, solid and secure. You can, of course, use some industrial strength glue as well. Um, if you're using a wood block instead of a foam, you might want to use even wood glue. So what I'm going to do is just get, take some of this glue and I'm going to just um, slather the ends of my wire with it. It doesn't really matter if it looks pretty or not. None of this is going to be seen. Um, it's just going to be stuffed inside of this block so it's fine if it looks kind of sloppy and um, you don't have to worry about the color of the wire or any of that either because it's all going to get covered up with the stocking in just a little bit. got the glue on I'm going to add a little extra hot glue at the base here just to make sure it's extra secure again don't worry about how it looks um, no one's gonna see this part it's gonna get hidden so totally fine um, you definitely want to push it down so it's in that block very securely but it doesn't need to go to the very bottom of the block either now once again um, once it's in here you are going to want to re-examine and make sure that the shape of the sculpture is what you were hoping it would be, um, that you like the height of it, you like the angles and the different directions that it's taking. Um, and once again, once we do our stocking step, this is going to not be something you can change very easily. So um, let this glue set and dry. And then if at that time you want to alter or change the angle of it just a little bit, you totally can. Now we're ready for the next step, which is to add our pantyhose to the um, sculpture. So what you're going to need to do is take a um, one leg of the stocking and you're going to want to make sure you cut it off so you still have the toe end. That's important because that's going to be at the top. And you're going to need to um, scrunch this up. So there's a couple ways to do this. If you've worn um, stockings before, you might have some experience with this. Um, putting my thumbs on the inside and then using my other fingers on the outside to scrunch it down on either side until I get to the toe. That's one way of trying to reach the end. The other is to take your hand and gently stretch it all the way in until you get to the toe end and then just use your um, fingers to scrunch up the rest of it to the top. And again, making your thumbs on the inside so you're right at the top of it. Um, now what I'm going to do is find the top of my sculpture here and I'm going to um, stretch my stocking over right at the toe at the tip of the wire here and I'm going to slowly and carefully stretch it completely over the wire as it's bent. It should stay in place pretty well since we glued it in and I'm going to be very carefully putting it in. So now I can start to see the shape of the sculpture and the way it's gonna take form and take shape. Um, if there's anything you wanna change about it at this point, um, you can very gently try to bend and twist the wires around um, to try to modify it, but it is kind of tricky to do. So that's why you wanna make sure you've made those decisions a little bit beforehand and there's not too much we can do to fix it once it's kind of secured in this position. So definitely make sure you've kind of thought about this before we get to this part because as you can see I'm trying to bend and twist it. It's not really wanting to move on me since I glued it into place. Now once I have it covered here this part's important. We're going to be stretching this over the entire block now. So I'm going to um, really try to stretch it out carefully and try to get it to stretch over the entire edge of the block, being really careful to not um, let it rest too hard on the wire by itself. 
because I don't want it to pull and alter where my wire is going to be in the black. So work with one corner at a time and this is why it's important to make sure you have the very bottom of it. Um, if you're black, if you're using the black like mine where it's a um, foam block, it might crumble and crush a little bit. That's really okay. It's not going to hurt anything to have the edges get a little crumbly. But I'm really trying to pull it tight here. I'm kind of bracing the end here against my stomach, so against my body here, um, just to give it some leverage. If you find that it's not stretching over very easily, you're not able to get it all stretched out, you might even consider cutting your block. Maybe your block is too wide and long, so maybe you want to kind of do that. Um, what I'm doing right now is I've got all this extra gap here, and I don't want that, so I'm going to be grabbing from that gap area, and I'm just sort of trying to pull it over the edge. Everything I'm doing, I'm doing very slowly and carefully so that I'm not, one, not tearing the stocking, but two, I'm not going to like ruin my block or anything either. So it takes a little finesse, it takes a little effort, a little bit of time to get this um, step done. So be patient with yourself. Give yourself a chance to kind of move around the sculpture and pull at the loose parts and try to tighten it slowly over the edge. Um, don't rush this part so that you don't have a big mess here. If you have too much up here too, you can again pull a little extra of the gap, just pull it down and slowly work its way down. If you pull too hard, you might end up with a run in the stocking. Again, that's not the absolute end of the world. It's not ideal, but it's not going to really totally alter everything because we are going to be painting over this and we are going to be adding some elements that's going to kind of hide some of that. So if you're struggling a little bit with that kind of thing, don't worry too much. But um, the tighter it is and the more taut you pull it, the nicer the angles are going to look. As you can see, it's starting to really take some nice shape now, especially down here. It's kind of coming out to this beautiful curve here. Um, and that's just because I keep pulling and pulling until I get it kind of the tightness that I'm looking for. So keep on pulling. Don't try to trim off any excess. You're going to have all this excess at the bottom. That's fine. Just leave it. We'll trim that stuff later in the process, not right now. So don't worry about it. Take your time. <laughs> to get a really beautiful smooth shape here. I might technically have a little loose bits here and there, but um, just get it as tight as you feel you comfortably can. And you should feel uh, should feel some tension, like when I push on it, it kind of bounces back at me um, because there is some tension here because of how tightly it's pulled. And that's what we want. We want to have some of that nice tight tension so that um, it creates these beautiful curves and lines. And as you can see, it's very lightweight. It stands up on its own completely fine. Again, we have all this gap, but we're not gonna cut off that excess until later. So now what we're gonna do after you've gotten it tightened over your sculpture as tight as you can get it, we're going to be um, priming it before we actually paint and design it. So the priming process can take a little while and it can take many, many coats. So um, there's lots of different things you can prime it with. Um, you can use um, straight glue, like Elmer's glue. You can use a little glue and water mix, which is what I'm using. Um, paper mache paste can be great. Plaster strips, um, just straight like house paint, latex paint, anything. There's so many different options. So um, I'm just gonna be tightening this a slight bit more and then we'll start priming it. tension that I've created here. Um, I feel like we've got some really smooth, beautiful shapes here um, with my sculpture and I'm ready to prime this. <laughs> so I'm not only um, painting 
the actual sculpture part that's up at the top here, but I'm also gonna be painting down here near the bottom and all over the block. The sides leading to the bottom, um, I will not be painting all this excess because that stuff's gonna get cut off after everything gets dried. So just take a little time now to paint your sculpture with your liquidy glue or your paint or your gesso or whatever material you decide to use to kind of help prime this sculpture. scrap of paper and I wrote my name on it and I'm actually going to flip it over and I'm going to be um, doing some more of this glue down here at the bottom and I'm going to let it kind of uh, dry on top of it that way um, I have my name sort of on my sculpture already and that's a good way to kind of make sure it doesn't get confused with anyone else's if you're doing this with multiple people um, if this is in a classroom or a bunch of friends or something this is a good way to like make sure your work is distinctly different and no one else gets theirs confused because they all are going to look pretty similar before we actually make our mark on them and give them a little personality with some color patterns things like that so this beginning stage they're going to be kind of very similar now again you see I'm not uh, putting my primer on this I'm actually just putting it on the bottom of the sculpture otherwise I'm just gonna kind of like stick this paper like that so that it'll end up sticking to it when it dries and uh, once you've gessoed or painted it or whatever it is whatever you're doing to prime it one time we're gonna set this aside and let it dry and we're gonna repeat this process at least twice maybe even more than that so I'm gonna find a nice place to set this to let it dry completely and then um, I'm gonna go back over it for a second time maybe even a third or a fourth until I feel like it's really stiff and secure my a chance to dry from the glue it is um, very stiff now and will definitely hold its shape really well so that is some, definitely something you want to do first before you're ready to paint because you just want to give it a chance to have some sort of strength to it um, now once you're at this point you can also cut off the remaining bit of your stocking um, if you're nervous you can um, tie it up like tie it into a knot and then cut it off so if that makes you feel a little bit more secure you want to tie it into a knot and then cut off the excess you certainly can do that um, I'm not going to worry about it because I think it's pretty stuck down there so I'm just going to cut it right off all right so I cut off my excess if I want to paint or glue that to make sure it's really secure I can honestly it's pretty stiff and strong with all the glue around it so I'm feeling pretty okay about it now I'm going to begin starting to paint this. Um, before I paint an actual design, um, whatever pattern or layers of colors I want to go with, I do need to give it still a base coat. So we did glue, uh, we did do paint the glue first to give it some sort of stiffness and security. And now I'm going to do a base coat of white. It doesn't have to be white when you are painting. If you want to use a different color, if you know that you're going to be wanting a metallic look, maybe you want a base coat with a metallic or with a black or something, I'm just going to be using a white acrylic paint. You can use um, any kind that you want. You can use a white gesso or anything like that. Um, I do recommend acrylic over tempera only because tempera does tend to crack and flake very often so I feel that the acrylic is going to be a safer bet so once you feel like you're ready um, you're just going to get any kind of brush you want and start applying your paint try to put it in a nice even coat and try to get everything covered um, depending on how opaque you want this to be um, I would recommend doing maybe a couple coats but if the base color isn't really that important to you and you're just ready to dive in with some details on top or some other colors then you can just do one coat but um, I think I'm gonna do two <laughs>
right, so I went over my entire sculpture one time, one coat of the white acrylic paint, um, just as a base color. Now, if you have no idea what your plan is gonna be for your painting, I do recommend a white as a base, just because it's very crisp clean. It will also be great to put literally any color against, and it'll make it a little bit more vibrant and saturated. Um, but if you do have a plan ahead of time, you know you're going to use a black base, a blue base, a metallic base, then you can go through it with that. Um, I just think if you don't know, then I would say go with something neutral like the white. Um, this does look a little streaky. I can see that it's a little bit streaky in some parts and kind of lumpy in other parts. Um, I might go over this with a second coat just to even that out, um, but I am going to give this a little bit of time to dry before I do my next coat, and then we'll talk about designing and adding that final touch, that final element to our sculpture. Okay, so I have done two coats of the acrylic white paint, so you can see that it's a really nice solid white color, um, a great base for any details or painting or drawing or anything I'm going to be doing to it. Um, if you need more than two coats, fine, but I think you usually, for the most part, two coats will do. And then now you're ready to start designing. So um, my recommendation is to, before you actually start painting the actual project, is to go in with a little bit of a plan. So you can free draw your um, sculpture on a piece of paper and sort of sketch out what your ideas are. You could also use some sort of pre-printed um, image of rectangles that you could draw your sculpture on top of, or like I said, you could free draw these rectangle shapes as well. So what I have here are a few different rectangle shapes on one side, some on the other, and um, I'm going to look at my sculpture and I'm going to try to draw it from at least two different perspectives. Um, that way I have a couple different views that I can look at to kind of really think about what the pattern and shape is going to look like when I start painting. If I just come up with an idea for one perspective, um, I won't really know what it's gonna look like from other perspectives without having pre-planned it a little bit. So you have to think about the base, you actually have to think about all the different sides and the different angles and the way it's gonna look, depending on how it's sitting. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to position my sculpture in a similar position as one of the rectangles that I've pre-printed out or that you could draw yourself. And I'm going to draw sort of the lines and the shapes that I'm seeing. I'm going to really focus on the line that has been formed from the wire. And then I'm going to try to create the line on the opposite side and just do my best to kind of get a similar shape. So that's what I'm going to do right now. sculpture and I tried to pose it in the same position as some of these rectangles and um, you could do this as many times as you want from as many different perspectives as you want. Um, I recommend doing it from at least two just so that you have sort of a game plan from at least a couple perspectives and then you're going to start coming up with your design. Are you going to just use colors and have it transition from one color to another? Do you want the base to feel like it's a part of the sculpture or do you want it to feel totally separated? Um, think about a theme that you might want to go with. Do you want this to feel like it's something growing out of the ground like from nature? Is this going to be based on some patterns or some color scheme? Um, so think about what you're going to do and just start drawing some ideas. If it's going to be a pattern, you're going to start drawing some different lines and ideas based on just the concepts that are coming out of your brain. Um, if you choose a design and you kind of like it from one perspective, think about what it would look like from another perspective, which is why you should have more than one um, perspective drawn here. So you can continue to figure out if you're gonna have the same design on the other side or if it's going to be something totally different. 
And lastly, think about what colors you might use. So if you're not interested in doing a lot of patterns, maybe get some color pencils and just literally go over this and play around with color and see how the different color combinations are going to look. That way you have at least some idea before you go into your final. Now, once you are ready to do your final painting of your sculpture, obviously there's going to be some variations and some differences that are gonna occur because um, drawing something two-dimensionally is very different than actually completing it three-dimensionally um, having this is a good guide um, it's really there to guide you but as you're painting as you're applying or drawing things to the actual 3d sculpture you're gonna run into problems or solutions that you just didn't think of when you were working in a two-dimensional form so be prepared flexible to change your design to change the direction that it's going in as you were painting and as you're drawing and working but definitely make sure you have some sort of base plan that you're gonna use as a foundation. And then from there you can grow and change into something else. So let's get going to transferring my design onto here and we can see how it looks when it's all completed.